There is a hole so deep that no one has been able to find the bottom. It creates strange radio signals and has been attested to reviving a dead dog. But this mysterious hole isn't in some far off jungle or desert. This is in the backyard of an American named Mel Waters. This is Mel's Hole. Back in 1997, a man named Mel Waters called into a popular paranormal themed radio show called Coast to Coast AM. On this show, he claimed he lived in a rural place in Washington state named Ellensburg, and on his land there was a huge hole, a hole so deep that it was impossible to find the bottom. Mel claimed that this hole had been on his land before he moved in, and locals all knew about it because they used to throw their trash in there, and we're talking big appliances, and they would go in, and they would sink, and it would seem that there'd be no bottom because it just would not fill up this hole, no matter how much trash was piled in there. Now, the hole was apparently nine feet in diameter, perfectly round, and surrounded by a collar of bricks. No one knew how this hole had been formed, but Mel decided he wanted to run some experiments himself. So one of the things he tried to do was he attached a weighted object to a line of fishing line. Now he couldn't actually use just one line because he wanted to throw so much in there, so he attached multiple fishing lines together and he threw the weighted object into the hole and saw how much line was taken. And it went down apparently 80,000 feet. That's 15 miles. And he said at that point, he just ran out of fishing line. He knew that this was not just an ordinary hole. There was something paranormal about this pit. Not only that, but local residents said that when they got close to the pit, if they had radio type devices, they would start to malfunction. They would pick up strange signals or just not work at all. There were so many strange tales about paranormal activity around this hole. Mel claimed that when he tried to tune his radio, he would pick up different signals that were seemingly from all around the country. And at one point, he picked up a baseball game from a signal emanating from the pit. But the problem was, that baseball game had run more than 20 years in the past. Roy Campanella had fired that ball in there and they had him. Lepowski is on at second base. Air on Jim Gilliam, first air of the season. That wasn't the only strange and mysterious phenomenon that happened. One of his neighbours claimed that his dog had died and he decided to put the dead dog into the hole as kind of its resting place. So he put the dog in, but then the next day he saw in the woods a dog walking. And this dog had the same collar as his dead dog that he'd put in the hole. It seemed that his dog had come back to life the next day. Mel had of course told all of these strange and paranormal facts to the radio show about the hole and of course it garnered a lot of media interest. Loads of people wanted to ring into the show to find out who this Mel was, to contact them, to go and see the hole for themselves. At one point when Mel had contacted the radio show, he was actually far out of town and he returned to his property a few days later. But when he returned, there was something strange that had happened. When Mel returned to his property, he was not allowed to actually get back on the land. It was barricaded off, and there were helicopters flying overhead, there was lots of military personnel on the ground. The US government had got involved. The military had told Mel that he was no longer allowed back on his land, that it may not even be his land anymore, and the excuse that they gave him was that there was a plane crash on his land. But of course, no one had seen a plane crash. There was no reports of any plane going down and there was no debris or smoke. So Mel knew they had heard about his hole on the radio show and they'd come to take a look themselves. Mel decides he wants to continue sharing what's happening with his property and is scheduled to go back on the radio show. But when they try and call him up because it's time for him to come on, he doesn't answer. And they try multiple times over numerous days and Mel doesn't answer his phone. Mel's disappeared. But three years later, something crazy happens. Mel turns up out of the blue. He's been living in Australia for the past few years, and he alleges that the reason is he was paid to move. He was told to sign a non-disclosure agreement and to leave the country and to never return. And he was told that actually if he leaves, he got paid $3 million as long as he doesn't ever come back into the country. 
But Mel was missing his family, and he decided, actually, after all this time, he was going to return to the States. And it turns out, that was going to be the biggest mistake of Mel's life. Mel is in the United States again, and he's travelling on a bus to see his nephew. But an altercation breaks out on the bus, and the police are called. And they start disembarking people off the bus to question them. But as they take Mel off the bus, he blacks out. When Mel wakes up, 12 days have passed. He's in an alleyway in San Francisco, and his keys and wallet and everything else he has on him have gone. But it's not only that that's disappeared. He tastes blood in his mouth, and as he puts his finger in, he realises his back teeth are missing. Mel never makes it back home. His bank account is emptied, he has nothing to his name, he's even charged with constructing buildings illegally on his land, despite him not being on his land for the past couple of years. So someone else has built some buildings on that land and charged him with building them. Could it have been the US government? But this wasn't going to be the end of Mel Waters, because after he resurfaced he had another strange, mysterious story. A group of people had heard about Mel's pit and the strange phenomena surrounding it, and they had found a pit themselves that they also thought was incredibly strange, and they needed Mel to investigate. Now, if you don't know what the Basque are, they are a group of people that are from a small Basque region between France and Spain. And this group of people had settled in the United States about 200 years previously, and they were shepherds by trade. And it was in Nevada that they had settled, and of course they had found this pit, and they needed Mel to look at it. The Basque shepherds believed that this hole was connected to the same mysterious phenomena as Mel's original hole. So when Mel came to investigate with the shepherds, they saw that the hole was actually pretty similar to his. It was perfectly round, and it seemed to be bottomless. But there was a few more strange things that happened with this second hole. At one point, Mel and the shepherds noticed a strange, almost beam of light coming up out of the hole, but it was dark rather than light. It was like a beam of darkness, and it looked more like a physical object. It was a very strange thing that they saw, and they couldn't explain it. The hole reportedly produced unusual effects on things dropped in it, and they dropped a bucket of ice into the hole and left it for a period of time in which similar ice on the ground above had melted, and then they decided to pull the bucket up and see if the ice had also melted to see if it was warmer or colder down there. But the ice had transformed into some strange flammable substance that seemed to burn indefinitely. Just when you thought that this story couldn't get any stranger, it does. Now the Basque shepherds know a lot about sheep and the anatomy of a sheep, and they decide, okay, you know, we need to perform another experiment on this hole, so let's take sheep, let's lure it down the hole and see what happens. So sure enough, they tie the, the sheep some rope, they lure it down the hole, they wait a period of time and they pull it back up. When they pull the sheep back up, the sheep is dead. But it's very strange because the Basque shepherds know the anatomy of a sheep. And so they decide to cut the sheep open to see what's caused it, kind of a post-mortem to see how it died. And when they look inside the sheep, there is a creature in there, a creature that's dying but is still alive. It's a small creature that appears to be like a fetal seal. And all you can really see is its eyes, and it imparts a great sadness upon those that's looking at it. And then it jumps down the hole and disappears. It seems the creature had jumped to its death. But what's very strange about this story is Mel allegedly had cancer up to this point, and it was terminal. But after seeing this creature, after interacting with it, he was cured. His cancer had gone. Not long after this story, Mel disappeared. And we don't know what happened to Mel. It's possible that he vanished due to the forces that he unleashed from these holes, or perhaps someone wanted to silence him and take him out of the equation. Or perhaps he simply disappeared out of fears for his own safety. To this day, we, we don't know what happened to Mel Waters. But the question remains, what are these holes? Well, there's many theories. Some say they are portals to another world or another dimension. Others say the Earth is hollow. There's a, a long-standing theory about the hollow Earth, where there's lizard people living inside it, and they claim that these holes are tunnels into that hollow Earth. 
As with most paranormal stories, there are of course those that claim it is aliens, alien technology left here on Earth or aliens living underground. And it is coincidental, you might say, that these holes, especially the first one in Washington, were found in areas where there are a lot of UFO sightings, a lot of paranormal activity and reports. A more skeptical theory is that the US government has underground facilities and these holes are ways of getting to those facilities. They claim that they're doing research related to advanced weapons, physics or energy production underground. Finally, there's the possibility that Mel's Hole is simply a legend, a hoax in fact. But as many may say that, you could argue that while Mel was away during those two years, it's very easy for someone like the US government to have covered up the story, covered up the holes and made it all disappear, so it looks like a hoax. Furthermore, some amateur enthusiasts went to the area because they wanted to find Mel's hole. And they did actually find a hole itself that looked very similar to how it was described, except it wasn't that deep and it turned out to be related to an old well. But they did see other wooden structures on the property that were as described by Mel in the radio show. So they claim that even if the whole, the stories around the things that happened with the hole were made up, at the very least, they've proved that the area looks like how Mel described. So what do you think? Are these holes portals to another world, another dimension? Are they secret tunnels for underground facilities or the hollow earth? Let me know in the comments what you think about this story, and I'll see you in the next one.